Hello. In the second video of this chapter, uh, we'll take the textures from our photogrammetry scan that we baked in Substance Designer, import them into Substance Alchemist and make a tileable material. So let's head back to Substance Alchemist, uh, bring our baked textures there and make a tileable material out of them. Select the three baked textures and drop them in Substance Alchemist. Just make sure that you're in the Create tab. Alchemist is going to give you an option what to do, presenting you with the pop-up. It has recognized that we are importing textures and automatically selected the option for that. If you see the red warning label here, don't worry. Nothing is wrong with the textures. That just means the Substance Alchemist didn't automatically recognize the file name. We can fix it that easily. Click OK and Alchemist is going to import the textures. Select the image import layer and the only thing that we have to change is the usage of the base color imports, from scan 1 to base color. We can now see all the textures in the viewport and adjust the displacement height to the appropriate value. There are some things that we want to fix here as well. The most obvious one is the tiling seam. If you remember the technique from the first chapter, the simplest solution is using the tiling filter on top of this and adjusting the position, rotation and the rest of the blend parameters. The difference here, compared to the first bar that we worked on, is that we have these bark lines following a very specific direction. Trying to magically tile that is probably going to be a little bit difficult. So, we can try rotating the tiling filter to match the line flow and blur the edge blend. The results are good, but they're not perfect, as you can still see these lines where the seams are. Let's go through a couple of more methods that might work better in this case. Delete the tiling filter and let's add another one, called Make it Tile Advanced. First thing that you might notice is that it has changed your base color because it has color equalizer built into the filter. Switch that option uh, to the value of 50 to reduce the effect drastically or manually enter an even higher number to disable it to an extent. Tiling in this filter works by introducing a layer on the edges, trying it to make it tile. But it has missed the tile in many places. We can play uh, with the threshold trying to find something that works a little bit better or we can try adjusting the contrast as well. Uh, eventually, for this texture, we're going to fall in the same problem as we did with the slightly less powerful tiling filter, being that we might not be able to get the perfect results that we want. The third method, and the method that I like to use most often, especially when dealing with something with distinctive patterns like this, is using multiple clone patch layers. If we switch to the 2D view, since we baked uh, using a cylinder, Horizontal tiling is actually perfect, uh, there is no need to tweak that. The only scene that we need to tweak is the vertical one. So, let's move the entire texture down so we can see the seam and work on it. Do that by applying a transform layer and carefully moving the seams to somewhere in the middle, and it becomes quite visible. We will fix it by using a clone patch filters. Good approach when using these filters is to patch by groups and try to fix the specific patterns or groups or elements of the pattern. For example, this dark part of the bark could be one group, and then this slide here would be the second, this would be the third, fourth, fifth, and so on. Eventually, we might need five or more clone patch filters to fix the entire seam. When finding a perfect place to sample the patch, try to match the pattern and the lighting to the closest way possible. By pressing the X on the keyboard, we can remove from or add to the clone patch area. Move on by adding the rest of the clone patch filters, tweaking each one of them individually until you get the result, the result that you need. Don't linger too much on them. As you remember, you can always go back and do the additional tweaks. Just be sensible and try to figure out the best way to match the pattern you're cloning. Make sure you're checking your progress not only in the 3D view, but also in individual texture channels as well. We can tweak the grid size, threshold and rest of the values for every clone patch filter individually, to get that final control and perfect results. Once we are happy with our material, we can repeat some of the steps from the first chapter of the tutorial. Start by adding the slope height blue sharpen and inflate the details just a little bit. In this case, a small amount like 0.1 is more than enough. We are still missing some of the texture channels, which we couldn't get by baking. For example, roughness. Created by applying a filter called Channel Generation, just make sure you turn off the generation for every channel except the roughness 
and tweak the initial value. Finally, add an adjustment layer to finalize with some sharpness on the base color, tweak the saturation if you want, and generate the ambient occlusion. The value of 0.2 looks good. Now that we have all the channels, it's a good time to take another look at the entire material and go back to fix any problem areas that you might find. In the end, save the material to your project's library and just for fun, check how it looks on the rounding cylinder with some shadows on. Export the final textures in the same folder as before, PNG, 4K, and we're done. To recap, we imported the baked textures to Substance Alchemist where we fixed the vertical tiling and generated the missing texture channels, making a tileable material from a photogrammetry scan. Join me in the next video, where we'll do the similar tiling fixes, but this time in Substance Painter. See you there.